we have come a very, very long way since 1967. But the reality is that most of it has been compelled by developments at that time. My dissertation that I finally ended up writing coming out of 1968 Cornell University was titled Sociology of Sport and it became the first integrated textbook focusing on a sociological analysis of sport as a social institution. Up until that time, sport had been relegated to physical education. Sociologists didn't feel that it was uh, up to their standard as an area of career focus or analysis. And one of the big challenges that I had was convincing even the people at Cornell that sport was worth looking at, that despite 105 years of sociology, a major institution, an increasingly important institution, had been overlooked and bypassed, mostly out of academic arrogance, that this was beneath us to deal with these physical activities. And the thing that finally convinced them that, hey, yeah, you can go ahead and write your dissertation in this area, was when I asked the question during a committee meeting, committee conference, my committee that was overseeing my dissertation, how can we believe as sociologists that a dyad, a two-person relationship, or a triad, a three-person relationship is worthy of analysis that includes volumes and hundreds of dissertations, but a hundred million people watching the Super Bowl is not worthy of investigation from a sociological perspective. It seems to me that that's a bit upside down. They had no response to that other than, okay, go ahead, go ahead and do it. And at the end of it, it became, my dissertation was published as the first integrated textbook in the sociology of sport. Now, that is driven, that was driven by the events of 1967-68. My work as a consultant was driven by the events of 1967 and 68. Even at Berkeley, where I was on the faculty for 31 years, the sociology of sport was seen as less of an academic uh, research area of career interest than a fascinating teaching interest that class in and class out logged 600, 700, 800. I had one class up there that had 1,100 students in it because everybody is interested in sports. But in terms of my actual standing in the department as a research PhD and so forth, they said, well, come on, this is, this is sport. They felt pretty much the way my committee did initially at Cornell. This is sport, this is, this is not sociology. This is not serious sociology. I mean, that guy that's sitting in a class with five graduate students, only two of whom even understand what he's talking about. That's a serious sociologist, you know. And so at the end of the day, I said, okay, fine, no problem. So I began to move out into the field as a scholar activist and to interface with the action down on the ground, with the uh, sports teams. And so at the end of it all, I ended up five years in the commissioner of Major League Baseball's office, I ended up 10 years with the Golden State Warriors and the NBA, and this is my 21st year here, not to speak of having lectured at every major institution in this country uh, with a, with a uh, sports team and uh, having uh, written extensively uh, in every form of publication about sport and society. All of that was driven by events in 1967 and 68. Uh, erase that period from my resume and I'm sitting up in some university 
probably having moved on from teaching and research to administration and maybe doing something else where, uh, you know, a six foot eight inch Ivy League educated articulate uh, former faculty member at the University of California at Berkeley would pre prove useful if only as a front. So I've, uh, uh, all of this was driven by that one 18 month period.